Um, what we're going to do in this top left hand corner is put in an exponential, but it doesn't have E as the base. It's going to have some other number, I've just called it A. On your keyboard, um, you can actually type A, and then if you go to the character above the number 6, I believe, um, it's called a hat, this guy here. Um, if you type in A, and type the hat, you should see your cursor goes up to the top to make a power, and then you just type in X, and then you should get A to the power of X. If you've done it right, and if I'm predicting it properly, it will then ask you, would you like to add a slider? Go ahead and do that, and you'll get a slider like mine. So just type this, if you just type this, I mean you can get to it on the Desmos keyboard, but this is, I'm, I'm just lazy and don't like using my mouse, so this will get you there straight with the keyboard. Okay, now, I did, you might notice, I did adjust the boundaries of my slider, you don't have to do that, but you can see I'm going to play around with some numbers in here, between 1 and 5. Okay, in fact, I'm just going to, I'm just going to animate it because I'm lazy. Now, I want you to remember, whoop, there we go. These are the exponential curves that we had a look at earlier, and we noticed something weird and interesting about the exponential curve and its gradient. Do you remember that? The gradient of an exponential curve, no matter which exponential curve you've got, right, it starts down low, because it's very shallow over there, and then it becomes very high, because this part of the curve is really steep, yeah? Steep gradient means a really large positive gradient. Um, and it is positive, why is it always positive? X is always greater than zero, but importantly, it also never turns around to become less than that. It never sort of becomes a decreasing function. Do you remember that language? Okay. So what you got, and you can, um, if you're animating like me, you just hit pause, right? What you got to see was that if you take the derivative of that function, and I'd love you to pop that into Desmos as well. Um, if you don't want to type that in, you can actually just go down to your um, bottom right-hand corner of your keyboard. And uh, under functions over there, if you go to miscellaneous, sorry you can't see it all the best here because it's right on the edge of my thing. If you go down to miscellaneous, um, d on dx should be right there near the bottom right hand corner. Um, so that means differentiate whatever you're about to type. And you can just type in d slash dx and you'll get this. Okay. Uh, I think it said gcd, which is greatest common divisor. But it's close, it's close, and the resolution is not the best, so I don't blame you, it's okay. Um, and then put in your original function, a to the x, right? Now I'm just going to put mine back in. Now let's just hit play on this, right? So what do you remember? Does this jog your memory? Do you remember thinking about this, right? Now hopefully you notice there's that special point when the green and the red graphs cross. Do you see that? In fact, they don't just cross, they become the same graph, yeah? Do you remember what that spot was? It's when A, it's when your base equals what exactly? E, right? 2.71, blah, 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 blah. And if you like, you can find it just like we did before. I'll just put it back to... Stubby fingers, don't fail me now. There we go, roughly. There you go, that's pretty close. So this is sort of when they're bang on, right? You remember that? Okay. Now, what I'm really interested in is, like, we fixated on that and then we got a result for it. But what I'm really interested in is when they're not actually the same, right? So here my derivative, the green graph, is above my actual graph, okay? And if I make a less than um, 2.718, like so, whoops, if I slide it across to something like that, our green graph's below. Now, what I want you to notice is it's an exponential curve, but it's like a smaller version of that, right? I want to work out what difference there is. It's a kind of exponential, but what exponential specifically? Okay, so what I want you to do now is, um, you can go ahead and hide that or just pop your lid down because you won't need it for this next bit. And if you haven't already, make this heading. It's the 16th of December. Yeah, I can hardly believe it. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to differentiate this exponential with another base, right? Like, for example, if it wasn't e, if it was 2, or if it was 10, or 100, or something like that, right? Now, in order to do this, we need to actually use the skill that I was reviewing with you earlier, which is changing back and forth between exponentials and logs. We're going to do this and work out, and this is going to seem a little bit of a weird place to start, but I want us to work out what this thing 
is equal to this thing here. Um, this result that we're about to prove, we're going to use it as we do this derivative. Sorry, do you have a question? Yeah, no? Yeah, okay, all right, fine. Now, at the moment, I'm saying e to the power of whatever this stuff is, and k can be any number, just like over here, k changed value all the time. What does this equal to, right? Now, I could put a question mark here because I don't know what it's equal to yet, but let's use algebra, let's just put a letter on that. Let's just call this guy x, okay? What I want to do is find out what's x actually equal to. Do you know the answer or do you want to suggest where we can go? Because I don't want the answer just yet. Okay, yeah, give me a suggestion. Where, how could I simplify this and start working with it? Uh, log f, sorry, hold on, log e of k, like ln k over log e of e. Are you, are you changing base up here? Is that what you're trying to do? Okay, so let's think about base for a second. I'll come to your suggestion in a minute, um, Sophie. I have a base from this ln, right? What is the base, by the way? E. It's e. So I'll just write this in full form. It's actually going to be helpful to us. Now, I don't need to change this to a base of e because it already is, so I'll just leave that as it is, but I, I want to do something else that might help me simplify this. Do you, do you have an idea, Sophie, or a, a, I'll take anything. Completely number, like, not necessarily defined, but like it's the only like, number, does that make sense? Oh, yeah, 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 I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. Like, so I could have written 2.718, etc. right? I think the word you're looking for is constant as opposed to variable, yeah? Like, it's a number that just stays put. Yeah. Uh, the short answer is yes, that k could be anything we like, and that x is what we're about to find out what it is. So I don't know what it is yet, that's what we're trying to do. Completely wrong, it's e to the x equals log e on k. Ah, okay, so what we're going to try and do, this is your suggestion, is to take this, this is currently an exponential equation, right? Something to the power of something else. And we can rewrite it, we've just been doing it over here, we can rewrite it as a log equation. I think we could do that, okay? So. Think about how we rearrange this, right? If you like, have a look at how you did question one. Have a look at how you did question one. That's exactly what we're gonna do here, except I don't have three, I've got E. I don't have 100, I've got X, and we're just gonna rearrange, okay? So what will the new subject be? Look carefully, what became the subject over there? In this case, we made K the subject. Do you remember that? It was the power. The power became the new subject. What's the power here? It's that guy. Are you okay with that? That's going to become the subject. Let's write that all down. Like so. That's become the subject. And then everything else rearranges on the right hand side, right? What does it become? It'll become log. And then the base moves over into the base. In fact, I'm even going to draw that. Like so. The base becomes the base. And there's only one number left to write. The only number I haven't written, which is x. Now, hold on a second. K is equal to x. Yeah, wait, wait a second, right? Look at this. The left hand sides and the right hand sides of the equation look very, very similar, right? You've got logs, you've got the same base, and then you've just got these two numbers which look different, but they can't be different if they're equal, right? Like that's what the equal sign means. So we're concluding here that this mystery number we're trying to work out, uh, x, it's equal to k. All right. And what this means is put a big box around this because we're about to use it e to the power of log k equals k. That's what it equals. Okay? And if you want, just grab your calculator there and just pull it open and choose a number. And go e, put it into your calculator, to the power of, and then in the power, put log of, uh, what do you want? 2, 9, pi, no, 18, okay? And what do you get as your answer? Excuse me, Mr. Wood. Yes, sir. <laughs> How did we go from e to the power of log ek? Yep. From this line to this line? Okay, it was tricky. To go from this line to this line, it's the definition of a log. It's the same way we rearranged this equation. So I want you to go back to your first question you did today and stare really hard at it. That's basically the way we did it by definition. Sophie. I thought it was really If I'm using a to the power of oh, log I'm a, c, 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 c. Yep. Where did that log e go? Log e k This one here? Yes. It became oh, this. Right there. There it is, right there. Is that okay? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know there's a lot of things that look very similar. Okay, but that's sort of the point so that we get to this result. Okay, all right.